I've added a couple more zip files to my website. Now, these circuit board files are based on original design, but they're untested as of yet. So uh, I'll get some feedback when somebody gets some circuit boards made. I've not ordered a batch of these yet. However, there's two files. <laughs> And the first one is a 5x7 matrix of LEDs, the other is a 3x7. And the idea is that these were an original sort of design the web website, a project to make signage, but very simple signage. It was just a fixed message in LEDs and it could be run off batteries or a USB power supply. It was just, it was a good idea at the time. Shame about the cost of postage of the circuit boards. <laughs> However, I've tweaked the design now. It seemed a good idea since I was redoing it anyway. And it's now got these pads at the top and bottom that you can actually bridge the circuit boards together to connect them in parallel. Uh, don't connect the ones in the middle, it will effectively short them out. It's just the ones at the top are the ones that bridge in parallel, but the ones here were the original ones if you just run uh, wire links to the circuit boards. However, let's start making one of these and I'll show you what they do. And to do this, I'm going to actually populate it with uh, red LEDs in the shape of the letter A, just a random letter. And the other ones, just for novelty, because I've not tried this before, I'm going to populate them in yellow LEDs. So for a start, when you're populating this, each LED position, and it can accommodate all types of LEDs, it can accommodate the standard 5mm, 10mm, 3mm, 8mm, even the 12 if you can get them, but it can also accommodate superflux LEDs. And there's a little, if you see the screen print uh, on this one, but you can't really easily see it because it's red on black, so it was designed to be quite visible. If you put these in, these red LEDs in, with the notch in the correct direction, which is the negative, and likewise, if you're putting these in, the negative would go down towards that notch side as well. What actually happens with these red LEDs is that these ones are from China. Well, most LEDs are, and as is typical, if you put it in the notch down the correct direction, they don't light up. But if you put it in the wrong polarity, it does light up because the red LEDs often have the polarity incorrect. It's worth uh, noting that. So I'm going to populate this. I'm going to put the resistors on the back. It was designed to keep it clear in the front, so the resistors go in the back. You'd normally just populate it where the, the LEDs are going. But in this instance, I'm going to put a resistor in every single position. One of the changes I made is that on the back of the original circuit board, you might be able to see it. You could see a very slight outline of the resistor position. I've got rid of that. It was just unnecessary. So I'm going to pop, pop this into the printed circuit board assembly rack. And I'm going to start populating it with the resistors. And I won't uh, torture you by having you watch me do every single resistor position. The zip files, you to use them, simply download the whole zip file. If you click on it on the, uh, in the, the page it's on, which I'll link to, then it uh, will automatically say what you want to do with this file. Just save it as a complete zip file. And when you go to, say for instance, glcpcb slash quote, uh, you'll find uh, a button you can click that you can then load your file and you actually just load the whole zip file to that. And then you get the option on companies like GLC, not a sponsor, of choosing the colour of the circuit board. If you choose black, the price will go through the roof. If you choose traditional green PCBs, like for instance this one, I'm just fishing one out, then although it's a bit kind of dull and green, it's not going to be a contrasty thing. Uh, what you can do is you can spray paint it if you want, uh, so you could have it any colour uh, and then put a contrasting colour of LEDs in it. So I'm going to keep uh, populating these and then I'm going to solder it and I'll be back in a moment. So one moment please. A couple of changes I've made to the circuit board are with the size of pad holes. Beforehand, the resistor holes were all 1mm, but I've changed them to 0.8mm because it's actually just a better size. And likewise, although the outer pad holes for superflux LEDs, the square 4-pin ones, the single colour ones, they're 1mm still in the new design, but the middle holes that are designed to take standard 3mm, 5, uh, 8, 10 and 12mm if you can get them, LEDs, they are down to 0.8mm now because it just makes a better fit. It's easier to solder when the hole is a sort of close fit to the pin going through it, but without being to the point that it's going to stop the pin going through. 
Now note that uh, I've put a resistor into every position here, but in reality I wouldn't normally do that. It would normally just be where you needed uh, LEDs mounted. So now I'm going to cut the resistor leads in the front. They are sold in the back just to keep them out of the way. Other things worth of note, the original design used, used gold-plated pads, and part of the reason it used gold-plated pads was because it was just a thing I went through. All my circuit boards had gold-plated pads for a while. It wasn't that expensive at the time relative to the cost of the PCB, and I thought it was a nice finish and it was quite nice to solder, but in reality, I've changed my view on that because uh, when you've stored these circuit boards for a while, the gold tarnishes slightly, and then you have to buff it with a soft cloth or a bit of a uh, kitchen towel to remove the oxide off the surface to actually solder them. So in a way, the uh, the standard hot air leveled solder. HASL, hot air solder leveling approach, is better. So let's uh, sweep this to the side. So the first uh, way I'm going, going to put the LEDs in this, I'm going to bring the frame back up. I'm going to pop the circuit board back in. And I'm going to populate it initially with just the red LEDs. This will take a wee while. Uh, but they go in the middle of the frame. Now note that it can accommodate those size of LEDs. It can also accommodate, if I haven't mentioned it before, the square superflux LEDs. Things worthy of note. These have a little notch on one corner, which is supposed to denote the negative side. And that matches this. So if you were to put them in, if it was any colour like green or blue or white, that would be fine. If it's red, for some odd reason, the Chinese manufacturing, they often put the polarity the wrong way around. And it's good to check before you put them in because you may have to put the little notch diagonally opposite to actually get these to actually light. If you do populate it with a whole load of these LEDs in red and they've got the polarity wrong, all you need to do is just swap polarity in that panel. It's no great deal. You can fix it. It's a happy little accident that results in no great gain at all, but it will work. So I'm going to populate it with the LEDs and I shall be back in a moment once I've put them in and I've soldered it. So the last few solder connections here and then we'll check it out. We'll put a USB lead onto it and we'll see what it looks like. I've pre-prepared the USB lead. I should have cropped all those terminals down. I won't actually, I'll just put it as it is. Prefer the lead have not checked the polarity, but uh, in this instance it's not going to be harmed if the polarity is wrong, it's just not going to light. So I shall solder the negative to there and the positive to there, and we'll see if that works. So there's the letter A, USB power bank, plug it in and there looks all right. It looks okay. Now let's see what happens when I put in the yellow LEDs as well. So I'm going to do that right now. I shall be back in a moment. And here's the end result. So I'll let you guys decide whether the yellow flashing LEDs are a good idea or not. Personally, my inclination is to say it. they're not such a good idea for visibility. It certainly has a bit of sparkle. And as long as they're not too bright, it's not going to outshadow the letter itself in the sign. So other things I considered, well, for a start, here's an example of the sizes of the circuit board. This is the thinner circuit board for like the slimmer figures. But one of the things that I considered originally was putting conductive pads around the screw holes so you could screw it onto a metal frame and the metal frame with the power supply. I decided against that because it actually means you can screw this onto a metal frame without actually worrying about it shorting out. Uh, it just means you've got more mounting options, even if it means that you have to uh, put the wire links across. The original one, it really was a positive loop going across all of them and then negative loop going across. But with the new circuit board, it is different. You can just link them across for smaller signs with a, a certain multiple of characters. It looks all right. I mean, it, it's visual, it provides a nice simple piece of signage. It could effectively be powered by a battery charged by solar power. So this would be interesting for outdoor signage or a, a sort of a outdoor venue where you just wanted some sort of basic guidance this way, exit, whatever, but you wanted it just powered from, say, something like a USB power bank, like this one is being powered from at the moment. And it should run for a decent length of time, depending on the amount of LEDs you've got and the amount of current, because you can... Uh, you can change the values of the resistors to match 
uh, how the intensity you want. You can balance intensity versus runtime, but certainly outdoors you wouldn't need much intensity anyway for a signage. But there we go. It looks all right. It looks quite smart. And those circuit boards are up. I shall link to them down below and you can tell what you think of this project or you can maybe try and make some yourself just in your name or whatever and let me know what you think of the end result.